Yo, people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for London Club's Carnage once again. The boys, the casting crew are here. Toby's living life, enjoying. He's already got a new signing in the building, maybe a couple signings. Everybody else, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're just waiting for our clubs to move. My team, finally, the sanctions have been lifted, so I'm happy. Um, the whole football world was rejoicing in my team's demise and collapse, but the fun's over now. The party, the party's over. Everybody get out, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we can finally look forward to potential incoming soon. I think we need to be getting things wrapped up really hopefully in the first week in, in terms of certain players. But before we get into that, Dan, Lawless, talk to me. How you doing, bro? Yeah, good, man. Good. Just like, you know, trying to... I always try and avoid these transfer rumours because it winds me up, but I can never stay away. Like, that's the problem. So I'm just trying to see what West Ham are bringing in and, and what we're getting rid of. But we, we've got rid of a few now. Mm. Watching some dead finals like as well. You know, with football, all the finals have been dead. But, you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually quite true. All the European finals were a little bit disappointing, especially even the when... playoff ones. Even the playoff I didn't watch one. the playoff final. Yeah, I didn't watch that one because um, yeah. I was so I was I I watched the Monaco Grand Prix, but the Champions League final was delayed so much it took a bit of the hype out of it. And yeah, the game was could have been better, but it, it was great. Um, Toby, bro, how you doing? Talk to me. How you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Had a great holiday um, back in the UK now, unfortunately, but. <laughs> Life is good. I can't complain. I can't complain. And uh, there's a new, there's a new horizon, man. Um, I'm sure Fu had spoke about the, the, <clears throat> the cash injection that mm. um, was announced last week. So we just build on top of that. Really, yeah. Life is good. Life is good right now. I, can't I want to go into more detail on that actually because I don't think we did touch on that. I think I think he was too busy enjoying the Champions League ceremony. Ah, <laughs> cool, cool. Dan Potts, talk to me. How are you feeling, bro? How you doing? Yeah, I'm sweet, boys. I'm sweet. I've had a busy day today. I've literally had to go and uh, sort everything out for my holiday away to Croatia this week. So I fly out tomorrow for a week, man. So I'm just looking forward to chilling, sunshine, and just no football for a week. This it's nice. You, know you need a break, man. I know you said no football, but you know what you should do? You should probably scope out some of the stadiums that you're going to be visiting next season when you're whilst you're there. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. No, man, no football. No football for me. I'm, I'm in enough of football stadiums, enough of football. I need to have a break and just some sunshine, non-football chat. And uh, yeah, it's going to be nice, man. But I'm uh, I'm always happy, looking forward to speaking to you three wonderful chaps about football. So um, this should be fun. 100% and to be honest I mean the breaking news just as we're recording this is obviously um, that Chelsea have finally been taken over by um, Todd Bowie and Clear Lake Capital so I'm, I'm happy about it you know it's the first it's, it's the first real um, time that it's finally now got everything's finally done I know last week there were some reports there was going to be done but this is now official the, the club shop is open the website's running again um, Charlie can go and get his t-shirt, do you know what I'm saying? There's so much now that we look forward to. Hopefully, um, we actually bring in the players we need to bring in. But as I was saying at the top of the show, Tottenham are the only team to bring in a player. So I want to kind of start there with Perisic. I'm not going to lie, when we were linked to Perisic for a, for a brief moment, I was actually quite happy about that link because I think he's a top professional and a top player, to be honest. And we spoke about last time you were on, Toby, about Conte bringing in these older players, whether, you know, Daniel Levy would actually you know, align his plans with that. Um, but he is on a free as well. How how excited are you about Perisic? Because I know you've been very angry about your wing-back options all season. <laughs> yeah, man. <clears throat> I'm very excited, man. I think that's a really good signing for us. Um, I think you'll get the, the typical cliche, oh, Spurs signing a 33 grown 34-year-old. What's wrong with him? Blah, blah, blah. And I think that's very sort of service, surface level analysis. Um, all you need to do... <laughs> <clears throat> All you need to do is just watch even Perisic and any fears on his age will be shut down because he doesn't play like a 33-year-old. He works his socks off, um, got a really good engine on him. And even at the age of 33, 34 years old, he, we, we must not forget that this guy was a winger. Yeah, this guy was a winger. So he's very comfortable receiving the ball in advanced positions on the football pitch, taking players on, beating people, and most importantly, his output. Whether it's on his left foot, whether it's on his right foot, this guy can deliver, yeah? 
There was a reason Man United wanted this guy five years, four or five years ago when he was playing as Inter starting left winger. There's a reason why he's performed at some of these major international tournaments for Croatia. There's a reason why he got voted. I think he got voted like their player of the season this year. Um, there's a reason why Antonio Conte used him as a as a as a wing back last season in in their title winning campaign, um, just off the back of his low move to Bayern because. He's productive. And the, as I said, the beauty of Perisic is he's he's so good with both his feet. Like you look at the Coppa Italia final, for instance, he takes um I think he took he took the penalty with his right foot and he scores an absolute screamer with his with his left foot, man. And I think what that signing also emphasizes is um what we've already known about Antonio Conte is that we need to capitalize on his brilliance. Harry Kane's prime, Son's prime. We need to start mixing our team and bringing in players for the here and now, yeah? We signed Romero, who's 23, going 24 years old, who's doing it here and now. We signed Kulisevsky, who's 22, doing it here and now. Benton Court doing it here and now. But we also need some XP, some experienced heads who have done it to also come and do it for us here and now as well. And I think... It looks as if we're keeping Cess. You know my views on Cess. I don't like Cess. I think he's poor, but he's staying. And he acted to, to, hit, to his credit. He, he did well in the last like three or four games of the season. And I think it, when we're looking at how we want Cess to play as a wing back, who better for him to learn off than than um, Ivan Perisic? And to sign this guy on a free transfer and pay him wages that um, we were offering to bums like Lamella. And Sissoko, like it's a no-brainer for me. It's it's it's, fan- it's a fantastic signing and free transfer, as far as I'm concerned. He was you offering them 175 grand a week. Then players, because that's the report. I see that Perisic is getting 175 k a week. He's not getting 175 k a week. That's yeah, that's a lie. Really? I literally, I no. he, he was on. I, I think he was on about 81 thousand at Inter. So I don't see why Tottenham would then go and double that. Yeah, he wanted his request was like something like um like six six million euros per season. That's what he wanted. Spurs are paying him <laughs> around ninety-eight grand a week. That's how much you're paying him. Yeah, mm. that sounds about right. I'm, I do you know what it's good to hear someone say um that you're here for the well, obviously from a rival, I don't want to hear it, but you know, that you're actually trying to play for the here and now. We hear so much about process, project, young players bringing in for the future. No one's ever really focused on the here and now. And, and like you said, with Son and Kane, those players are not getting any younger. They're in their peak right now. The next couple of years and the couple of years we've just seen is their peak. So if you're going to win a trophy under that, that crop of, you know, with those crop of players, which are your best players, then you need to be ready to compete next season. Literally, there's no time to waste. So yeah. usually, so, you know, usually it's like, oh, we've got to bring in young players. We've got to do this. But, this is where having someone like Conte makes sense is that he's not here to do the next five years. He's not here to do the next even three years. He's here to do now. Yeah, and yeah, yeah you, you've got Kane. You've kept him. It looks like you're, you're going to keep him. I know we're going to get into it a little bit later on in the show about what's happening at Liverpool because it, it may... It's it may <laughs> they're trying nothing. to make it. No, there's nothing I'm happening. Really no, you're really not going. Just <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> Some bored teenagers just talking rubbish, but I'm sure we're talking talking it later. Yeah, go on. Mm, yeah, but but you know, Kane, if he, it looks like he's, I don't see why he would move now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there, there shouldn't be any movement on Kane or any real story on Kane. You're in the Champions League next season. You've got one of the best managers in the world. There shouldn't really be any any you know moving pieces there. And I, and I said it to Chelsea fans really for last week. You guys are the ones I'm worried about the most because you've got the manager. That's ready to go now. You've got, you're bringing in. You're going to bring in the players that are ready to go now. Um, I just saw Hakimi apparently in reports saying that he's unhappy at PSG and you know he's not getting utilised in his best position. I'm I'm not not really sure if you guys could afford that kind of wage, but that listen, would be a pipe dream. It's Conte, bro. Oh, it's wow. Conte. <laughs> that would be the big. I I can't see. I, I, there's no way I could see that deal happening. And it, I, I would love for it to happen, but I mm. can't see that happening. He's earning like 180 bags a week at PSG. He cost them like 61 61 million pounds. We're already trying to sign a centre back. That's that, that's gonna try. That's gonna most likely cost us in the region of 50 to 52 2 million pounds if we do sign him plus we still we still need to sign 
central midfielders. We still need to sign another attacker. We still need to sign another... Um, we, exactly. It's just, I know we've had this catch injection, but we ain't Mad City. We ain't made of money. Do you get what I'm saying? But listen, if there is a way that that Hakimi deal could happen, wow, my goodness, I would... Yo, I would be all... I would be all ears for that, man. I would be all ears for that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Back, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting my hopes up. As I said, I'm, I think it's a pipe dream. Um, but back on the Perisic thing as well, like the here and now, it's not capped at old players. It's just players who can come in and just hit the ground running straight away. Like Kulisevsky and Benton Cole, they're young players who can help us in a couple of years' time, but they can help us right now. They hit the ground straight away. Romero hit the ground straight away. And I think... Perisic in a two-year deal represents the type of player who literally comes into this team and hits the ground straight away. No longer are Spurs trying to wait on this player to to wait on a first-team starter to develop in two, three years' time. No, we need you to do a job now. And that is the attitude that um, I think we should have in the rest of our team. If you look at our centre-back options as well that we're trying to go for, we're clearly, like, it's been confirmed that we're trying to sign Bastoni. Bastoni is a 23-year-old 23, 23 centre-back. Yeah, he's young, but he is literally one of the best centre-backs in Europe right now. He comes into our team and he upgrades us significantly. Yeah. Significantly. So, significantly, <laughs> bro. So, so, like, these are the type of players that Spurs should be going for. And the fact that we're in for these players is positive for me because there's a mind shift. No longer are we looking for our oh, resale value in two, three years. We're looking at, no, your levels... Come and play for us right now and let's try and do something. That's what I want. How confident are you about Bastoni? Because he's... I'm not sure how much money they're looking for for him. Obviously, we, we've we been linked to him as well because we were looking at centre-backs, but I think your link is probably a little bit stronger. But it's also into Milan as well. And if they're going to compete for the league next year, you wouldn't expect them to be selling one of their leaders in their in their back line. But strange. I wasn't, I wasn't confident on Bastoni... Um, when, because he was, his name, his name's been linked to us for the for the for a couple of months now. My friend from um, Yao um, from New Spurs Order, he's been talking up Bastoni, and I've always said to him, "Listen, it's a pipe dream. He's going to cost too much. He's going to cost loads and loads of money, and I don't see Inter selling him. I think their their money problems are overstated. But the noise I've been hearing in recent weeks and the confirmed interest for Brizio, Alistair Gold, Dan Kilpatrick, every single person." is reporting that Spurs are definitely going to try for Bastoni, yeah? But in recent weeks, I'm hearing that Inter would be willing to sell him. They'd be willing to sell him. And I think whilst they're not in Barcelona-type issues, they're always looking for an opportunity to try and make a profit on one of their better players and try and replace them with a player who can come in and do a job Maybe not as good as the player that's left, but coming can do a job and saves their money in the long run. And then when I'm seeing that Inter are actively pursuing Bremer, who plays left-sided centre back, yeah, would cost cheaper than um would cost less than what they would stand to make from Bastoni. It's given me a little bit more belief that Spurs can actually try and sign this guy. Like it's it's crazy. And then the Antonio Conte factor as well. He definitely wants to play for Conte. He definitely wants to play for Conte and we will pay him more than Inter are paying him. Mm. A thousand percent. We'll pay him much more than Inter are paying him. So I think there's definitely legs in that move and I think Bastoni could actually end up playing for Spurs. But again, we're just not the only team interested in him. There are a host of clubs that are interested in him and all it takes is a bigger club with a bigger name than Spurs with who are willing to pay him more money than we are to come in and then that scatters our that that scatters our deal, which is why we need to move fast. If there's an opening, we need to move fast. Mm. And it looks like if you are going to do that, you'll probably be sticking to that back three. You've obviously got Perisic, you can play wing back as well. Dan Potts, <laughs> how tough is this to hear all of this, man? I mean, it's like it's it's instant impact, it's brace for impact, it's Tottenham's new shiny stadium with Conte, a manager that's not here to piss about, and he's literally and, and this is what a manager can do, right? Raise the expectations around the whole club. Tottenham could have easily got on board with a with a project or got on board with long-term planning or got on board with any of these things if it was shoved in their face and given and given the light of day and the time of day. But 
Conte just comes in and immediately says, listen, you bring me players that are going to improve my team, not only in January, but in the summer, why we walk? <laughs> so you got you got one choice. And now Levy, you know, Levy's got, he, he's already brought in a couple of players from in January. And, and now obviously, you know, they've already made moves in this, in this transfer market. They've taken the opportunity of a, free agent in Perisic, who I think is so Premier League ready, it's not even funny. I mean, he's been linked to Premier League moves before. Player of the year at Inter Milan, he's, he's, he's still performing at a great level. How, th- how does it feel as an Arsenal fan to hear all of this? Basically, what I wanted to see happen with us is happening with them. Um, I wanted to see a world-class elite manager come in, and we didn't get that. Um, I had an argument with an Arsenal fan when they appointed Conte. He said it was desperate. It's pure desperation. And I said, to me, it's more ambitious than desperation because I think Daniel Levy knows that everything else that he's tried has not been right. And I know that he's had now, I think it's ambitious to go for an elite manager like that. So it's worked out. Conte's come in. If they back him, like I've said all along, I think Tottenham will be the best of the rest next season. And by that, I mean Liverpool and City are ahead of them. That's it. I think they'll come third. I don't see how he is anything but good news to Tottenham. I think he's the best thing that could have happened to Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. None of those players we're mentioning even look at Spurs without Conte. Like, no offence, I think Toby would agree. Like Hakimi wouldn't come there under Nuno. Um, he wouldn't come there probably under Jose, to be fair. Bastone, Bastone is not even sniffing Spurs without, without Conte. Uh, yeah, and another one. So Perisic is a really it's a good and bad thing for... Um, for anyone who doesn't support Spurs, the good, uh, the bad news is that um, he's a great player and that he's a winner and he's got the mentality to be everything that Tottenham need. The good news is that he's only going to be there for about a year, because <laughs> or two years tops, because obviously his age. Um, I'm not so sure that I've seen his stats and fitness records, so I'll look into that. But obviously, playing as a wing back is going to be a lot different than playing as a winger. So I didn't know that he was coming in as a wing back. But I'll look into that because that was going to be one of my questions to Tobes was, is he going to be fit enough? And obviously he's already answered that, yes, he is. Um, So that's going to be a a good signing. And if I'm honest with you, um, I do feel like the the players they're linked with, the the keepers are are no brainer for me. If that's going to happen, that's a Premier League proven goalkeeper with experience. You can come in and compete with Lloris or at least be be there for when he's when he's injured. Um, The fullbacks they're linked with, I see Jed Spence. That would be an unbelievable signing. I think the kid looks mustard. Uh, and obviously Perisic, um, I've seen linked with with Bastoni as well. And there was another couple that have kind of come in and around. And they're all because of Conte. It is all because of Conte. And Champions League, even, even more so, it's the best thing that could have happened to Tottenham was getting that Champions League. But I am worried um, about Tottenham. I don't think they're going to win a Champions League or a Premier League, but they can certainly win a domestic cup next year, in my opinion, with that manager and also finish the best of the rest in third. But I mean, Tottenham fans must be worried. I mean, I don't know how two of their best players, Matt Doherty and Oliver Skip, are going to get into this side now. You know what I mean? so it's, going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how that happens. This guy's pathetic. He, he doesn't want to do you don't want to let shit go, man. It's it's, it's neither do you, neither do you. Every time in the big six, star boy Havertz, how's Havertz doing? Oh yeah, that's different. One v one demon. Yeah, that's, that's different. Havertz. That's different. <laughs> that's fucking different. But anyway, now nah, um, with with Perisic, I think he might even be. I think he might have an injury now, but he didn't miss much football at all for into last year. I think he, I think he missed what like four days, four he's days. Not, he's not injury prone in the slightest. He's it's not so injury prone. Related. And I think, yeah. I think, of course, the Premier League is a different beast in terms of intensity. But as long as you've got that work ethic, yeah, I think you, I think you can translate your skills to the Premier League a lot better. And I think the one thing that's that's aided the likes of Kulisevsky and Benton Court is even in Serie A, these guys were known for their work ethic. And to play for Antonio Conte, you are put through your paces. You are really, really put through your paces. He's a rigorous, he's a manager who 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 has a rigorous um training regime. So he wouldn't be signing um Ivan, he wouldn't be signing a player like Ivan Persic at this age if he didn't think that this guy could cut it and cope with the physical demands of the Premier League, which is why me personally, I'm not I'm not worried about any of that. I'm not worried about any of that. And to be honest, in our team. We've got work horses in our team. That's not our issue. Our issue is quality. We need quality in the final third outside of our front three. We need quality from the from the wing backs. 
Too many times we have wing backs who get into the final foot and they make the wrong decision. With someone like Perisic, we have someone who is a threat in terms of his ability to shoot, his ability to come inside or go on the outside, and most importantly, his ability to make the right decision. So I'm happy with that. And then I think, Matisse, you, you said that you and Fuad, you didn't touch on the, the cash injection as well. This is why I'm, po this is, again, another reason why I'm positive. In 10 years, prior to that announcement, the Spurs, so Enoch had only put in, I think, 15 million into the club. Hmm. Yeah. Just a week ago, we get an announcement that they've bought more shares Increase their controlling stake at the club, and as a result, they are injecting 150 million capital investment into the club to to um, to invest on and off the pitch. And let's be real, people people who want to be negative will say, "Oh no, maybe that 150 million isn't going totally on transfer budget. Even if it even if it's not the 450 million, just give us even 80 percent of that is is more than what we've had in the last 10 years, which signals a change." it signals the fact that these are, are finally clocking that it's now or never with Antonio Conte. Mm -hmm. It is literally now or never. If you don't buy into this guy's methods and give him the necessary resources and give him plan A in every single position that he wants, if you can't do it with him, then who are you going to do it with? And it's just funny because certain sections of our fans have been asking Conte to shut up, oh, stop moaning, do your job, get on with your job. Do you think, did Daniel Levy do this for, for Jose Mourinho? No. Mm. Did Joe Lewis and Daniel and, and Daniel Levy do this for, for Nuno? No. Even Pochettino, where we absolutely needed, did they do it for him? No. Mm. But they finally done it for Antonio Conte, or they're finally doing it for Antonio Conte. Obviously, obviously it remains to be seen what other players follow, Fraser Foster and, um, and Perisic. But the intent is there. But that's why, Tobes, that's why earlier on, earlier on, I was surprised when you said about the Hakimi thing, because obviously it could be a potential unrealistic signing. But would you not want to see the ambition to go for it? Like you, you want to be a big Oh, no, club, go for it. A... Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying don't go for it. Go for it. I, I want Spurs to go for it. I, me personally, I just don't think it's going to happen because the finance is involved. I think PSG, if they sell him, they're not going to sell him on the cheap. PSG rarely, they rarely sell their prized assets. And Hakimi is a prized asset for PSG. They rarely sell their prized assets. And if they do, they're going to be charging you an arm and a leg. Yeah. You look at this, you look at the spine of their team over the last couple of years. How many players have, have actually been sold for a good price that weren't on their way out already? Mm. Um, what's his name? Verratti is still at the club. Neymar is still at the club. Barcelona couldn't afford him. Yeah. Marquinhos still at the club. Mbappe, a year left on his deal last summer and Madrid bid 160 million euros and it got knocked back with a year left on his deal. Yeah? Hakimi falls into that bracket for me. Yeah, he's not ha he may not be having the, the best of times if we we're, if were to believe rumours right now, but the club don't seem intent on selling him. So if you're coming in for him, you're going to have to give them serious dough. And I just don't know if we're going to be able to pay the amount that they want for Hakimi. I don't think we'll be able to, but try. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I could be That's wrong. what I'm meaning, man, because I think, like, that's the next level for you, is to go for those. It's fine getting the Kulisevskis and the Ben Tenkers because they, of course, improve you. But when you're looking at proven, you, you know, like, he would just be in that position under Conte. The style of football, he'd be a beast. And oh, I don't think you could get many better than if he becomes available then, you know, as much as Jed Spence good. looks wicked. Hakimi Listen, would be different. I would much we? rather we move for we we try our hardest to sign Hakimi than Jed Spence. I don't even dislike Jed Spence. I think he's a I think he's a good prospect. I watched him yesterday. He wasn't great. It was mid, but I think with Jed Spence, I think it might be too much too soon mm. to, to to buy him and thrust him in and say yeah. you are our first choice right yeah. wing back because it's, it, they it's not, actually give me Sessignon vibes. Do you remember what you said? If it was the same kind of same, same kind of thing, it's not. This is what I'm saying. It's not. It's not easy. Like. As much as you ridicule Emerson Royale, Chicken Royale, yeah, the standard is high. To be a good wing back in the Premier League, the standard is high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just enough that you can be fairly decent defensively. You are gonna get the ball in the final third, which means more often than not, you have to deliver. And with Jed Spence, 
I just think it might be too much too soon. I have no qualms with Spurs signing Jed Spence, yeah? You can have him in rotation, but saying you are our number one right wing back, I'm a bit uneasy with that. You, you don't need rotation. You need a starter. We need you? a starter. This That's is what I'm problem. saying. We need a starter. I don't get starter vibes from Jed Spence. I, I think he can play for Spurs, 100%. And I'm not gonna diss him if he if if we do end up signing him, but I don't get those, I don't get the same vibes I get from Perisic. Mm. I don't get the same vibes I get from Kostic. I don't get those vibes when I'm looking at Spence on that right hand side. Mm. And that's what we need. We need offensive quality. Do you think Perisic is definitely going on that left then and and, and you need that right or or it could go? I think he's gonna go, I think he's gonna go on the left, but I would really like I would like him to go I would I wouldn't even mind him going on the on the right and then getting overlapping the, on, on Kulisesi yeah. And, yeah and a lot of people will say oh no oh but where's the defending where's the defending where's the defending Perisic I've not really seen him get skinned regularly to be fair I, I know the Premier League is a different beast but Spurs Sessignon in the last four games showed that he has the capacity to defend Chicken Royale showed the capacity to defend. He's not good enough. We need to sell him. I'm sick and tired of focusing on just defending. I need someone who... I would even prefer if you're way better going forward and you have a little bit of deficiencies defend, def defensively. You can work on defending. Under Antonio Conte's system, you can work on defending. And if we have, if we have Romero on the right-hand side to cover the right wing back, that's already... An added an added layer of protection, and if we sign who we want to sign on the left hand side, that's another added layer of protection. I want to see what you can do going forward. That's what we need in this system. That is what we need in this system. Mm. Yeah, one hundred percent. Lawless, bro. How you feeling listening to all this as a West Ham fan? You've had your back and forth with Tottenham all season. Obviously, you guys had a better season, but now. Now it's the season's done and we're moving on to next season. How are you feeling now? It didn't have a better season. I knew he couldn't let that lie. I knew he <laughs> had to it. It didn't, didn't have a better season. It didn't have a better season. It's bullshit. <laughs> not, over, over the course of the entirety of the season, I, I'd say we did. You had a miserable no, you didn't. first half to your season. You had a miserable first half of your season. And what's your second half been like? Uh, outside out, outside of Europa? You can't what's say outside of that, though, because that's a big yeah, part. Yeah, that's part of the right. season. Yeah. Okay, so by that logic, we got to the semi-finals of the League Cup. You did. I'm yes, not being funny. Just, the League they Cup ain't nothing, cup ain't nothing near the Europa League, League, though. Let's not play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on. Don't even, <laughs> don't even bring your little League Cup to it's we got to the quarterfinal with the league. Same level cup, the though. Come on. It's not and who knocked you out? Oh, come on now. Who knocked you out? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we finished talk about that game. I was finishing fourth. I was finishing fourth and like 11 points ahead of them. And you're telling me that they had a better season because they got to the semi finals of a competition that they didn't win. No, I'm not having that. That's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. That's not true. If I applied that logic with Spurs, you lot would shut me down right now. No way. No way. That's, not, that's, absolutely, that's absolute nonsense. No. I I'm had more enjoyable that. moments than you did. Let's just talk about that. Toby doesn't enjoy football anymore. Did you have... Yeah, I guess you did. I guess you did. Yeah. But not taking off the campaign. Well, no, yeah, even included uh, Sevilla, which you said who you said would knock us out. There's no one. way you're beating Sevilla. One. There's no way you're beating Sevilla. Leon. 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 That's, Two. Four, that's four matches. Yeah, that's four, four, four matches Leicester, right there. Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal. <laughs> um, it's fine. You can, you can have all these made up thingy with Bobs, but I'm just saying, there's no way you can tell me West Ham have had a better season than Spurs. No, I'm not having that. No, we, ju we, just did. we just did. Well, it's not true. <laughs> yeah. the, striker, the, striker scored, the striker scored like one goal in his last like 50 appearances. Yeah. 50? I'm what obviously exaggerating. I'm exaggerating for effect. Yeah. <laughs> who are we talking though? Are we saying like as a neutral who, if you so ask a neutral who's got a bit, had a better season, Tottenham or West Ham, or by the standards of Tottenham and the standards of West Ham, who's had a better season? Like, Listen, there's two it's different not about, questions. There. Forget about Champions League. You know, let's, let's, they... let's, let's not sidetrack. Let's not sidetrack. I'll go on, you speak to Matisse because mm. but I'm just I just want you to know I don't agree with that statement. <laughs> I okay, think we got okay. that. <laughs> we was we was waiting yes. on your Czech Republic shareholder extra funds. Obviously, Toby's got his extra funds now. Where's your extra funds? Put your money on the table, Lawless. What's going on? 
I need actually? to know. I'm trying to know what this because this guy, right? We got um Hlozak, or however you say the geezer's name. He's gone to buy Leverkusen. Yeah. How how has he gone there when our when the guy who the the Czech guy he owns that club? We're hearing like he was gonna you know just move the money from this pot to this pot. You know what I mean? Like just slide him over him. You know I'm seeing him move over there, so I'm really wondering like what's Krasinski doing? Like what what is he on? Because that's a signing that we could have made and we could have got a bargain for. But I, I this guy needs to wake up. I need to know what his ambitions are, what his intentions are. You know, I'm, I'm seeing movements that we're making. We seem to be making movements early, which I like to hear. I need to see. Apparently, we're signing a couple of players this week. Ariola um, and Egued, the, um, the left-sided centre-back. So, we don't do that. We usually wait until, like, the, we, we just chill for the summer. Then the last couple of weeks, we're like, oh, shit, we need to make signings. Like, and then try and get them all through the door. So, that that is positive. Lingard... Seems to be stalling because he wants 180k. I don't know what he's smoking, like really and truly. 180k. Yeah, Jesus week. Christ. That's what he wants. Apparently. Why, That's why, why, why does God. he think he should be earning anywhere near that? He's never shown he's, in his career he should be making that type of money. It's his last payday. Man United are paying him 100 grand a week, so he said, "If you're paying, if you get me on a free, that's how much I want," which is ludicrous. But but this this whole mm-hmm. thing. How much like, does Manchester oh, I pay him? They don't pay him 180, do they? No, no they no, pay him no, 100 no. grand a week. So why yeah, does he think he plans. deserves an 80k increase on what he's? But this, it's a mindset of he lost big think, contract, isn't it? So he doesn't I deserve a big contract. The, the, the no one's that, paying him the, that. The, the notion that players. Yeah, I agree. No one's him. paying him. But I'm I'm giving you his yeah. reasons for for but asking. That's, for that. that's not a reason. Like your if your form is at a world class mm-hmm. level, then you can deserve a last big payday. At the moment, he's no, he's a player. On, is, every every footballer is gonna want a yeah, but. A, but you there's a different. There's, a big payday it. is relative relative to your level. So he does a he he wants a last big payday, which he's looking for. Yeah. Yeah. But 180 grand a week is madness. Yeah, that's me, what I'm saying. He doesn't deserve that. Even on a, even on a free payday. transfer, that is a joke. That he'd be he'd be by far and away your highest earner, right? Yeah, yeah, easily. Yarmolenko was on like 120, 140 or something. Jeez. So he Yarmolenko would... was 140. It was between a like sign like between 120 to 140. He was on, yeah, I know, madness. Pellegrini wow. was just out here like flipping, going mad on on these these wages. <laughs> That's madness. I, I think Lingard's brother is his agent, and the guy just comes across like a bit of a dickhead. Um, and I think he's he could be an influence in here of going like, yeah, listen, you're a free. He's a free transfer, so that means you can afford because you're not paying a, you know, a fee. Uh, you know, a transfer fee, you can afford to pay him 180 weeks. That's not how it works. We have a wage structure. You have other players that you're bringing in Lingard. They're going to be asking questions going, well, why is he on 180K and I'm on like half of that? What's going on here? Like, I have no problem giving him a signing on book fee. Yeah, a little bonus. little Here's a little five mil or something. And we're going to pay you like 120 grand a week or something like that. I don't mind that. I can, I find palatable. He was very effective for us last time. Let's talk that, but this is getting silly to make nearly 200 grand a week when you've you've barely played all season. Yes, you had a good run with us, but that was like for like five months, and then before then you barely played. Like uh, uh, maybe Newcastle, we think Newcastle will be stupid enough to pay him that, or Aston Villa. Yeah, they're paying you, people you, stupid wages. <laughs> if you were to no, give him, if you were to give him say five million signed on, on that would be 96k over over 52 weeks right obviously as tax mm. that is that is your 120 to um Listen. 180 that is your difference right if you add in yeah. tax if you want to throw in tax so obviously it's just the one year but that should compensate for maybe what he wants after the first year then once you've delivered that that form that we saw at west ham over a whole year for the first yeah. year then maybe you can Look for incentives and you can yeah. go again. But Chuck some you... bonuses in there, you know, goal bonus or whatever you want. If we qualify for, you know, Europa, yeah. you get this. If we qualify for Champions League. That's how, put them things in. I'm not just going to off the bat say, yeah, 108 grand a week regardless. Like, nah, mate. Uh, you know, I, I I really loved him at the club, but not that much. Is so, anyone else in for him? Is it just you that's in for him? No, nah, Newcastle have been linked to him since January... I don't know if they'll go for him. Um, Spurs were we'll linked to him, him, but they probably won't go for him now. We're not going for him. We're not going no, for him. I think, I think with um with Jesse Lingard, yeah, like he's 
he's at risk of oh if this if that 180k week claim thing is true he's he's at, he's in serious risk of overplaying his hand because yeah. it's like one you're 30 years old so i'm sure he's probably going to be pushing for you lot to give him a three year contract instead of a two year so mm. if he's pushing for a three year contract in what world is the premier league side going to pay this guy 180 grand a week on a three year contract off the back of the season, you've just had from Man United where you've barely played. Like mm-hmm. it's, it, it, yeah, he mashed work for West Ham in that in that six month spell, but that alone is not enough for the, for a, for a team to then say, okay, cool, yeah, you're worth 180 grand a week. I need to do some research. What what are, what are West Ham actually offering him? Have West Ham offered him uh, a contract? Yeah, we, we we've been negotiating with him. Like yeah, that, but what that... what do you know what what has been offered? Let's see. I don't know what we've offered. offered. I just know that we weren't feeling that 180 grand a week demand. And that's why... I can't I've believe you want so much, man. I've stalled. I wouldn't be surprised to see someone like Everton. Like, Richarlison's going to be sold. He's got. He's leaving. He's pretty much all but said he's leaving. And Who? I... Richarlison. Richarlison. Has he? Yeah, he came that. out and basically said that... Um, he he'd done an interview and he said, like, he's going to talk... He's going to wait till June to really talk about it. And it's always hard... When you're discussing leaving a club like Everton, and it's he basically kind of said he's leaving without saying it. Um, so yeah, like he, you know, so he'll probably leave, and I could see Everton the way they do business. I wouldn't be surprised to see them just give him that, or again, like yeah. I said, Villa. That's stupid a good money. point. Everton would be stupid yeah. enough to go for that many, that, yeah. that much a week. Like if they're going to give us forty million for a Wobie, then they're definitely going to give you know Jesse Lingard what he wants. So yeah, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like he'll come to you, but. The question is, is whether Frank Lampard would would have changed Everton's remit in terms of the way they go about signing players. Obviously, they signed Deli Ali, which was already stupid enough to bring him in from Tottenham. That was a permanent, wasn't it, Toby? And now Deli Ali's there. He's, that's 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 permanent. He's not coming back to Tottenham, is it? it wasn't a loan. No. Yeah. That's permanent. So. What did you get for it, though? Like, because there was rules, there were stipulations, in it? Yeah. So they... it was it was initially on a free transfer, but with with conditions being met, it will rise up to. Like 20, 20 to 30 million. Wow. But those conditions so haven't been man. met because they didn't play him. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, but yeah, I think He's this on, summer, he's... this summer it should have been like it should have been like 10 million this summer. But either way, Spurs are gonna get some money out of that. They didn't play mm. him. They I think that's why they avoid they avoided playing him at the in the end because they didn't want to pay pay the money. Because it was I meant mean, to yeah. be a certain amount of games played before the end of the season, and then yeah, they get a certain yeah. amount. I'm I'm lucky for you, but uh you know what? The thing that worries me the most, what I heard was um, hearing that Moyes apparently wants Antonio to be his first choice striker and to bring in a backup to Antonio rather than get a marquee oh striker God. in. Yeah, and it's just like when I see that, and I just pray that's not. How true. old is he? He's like 33, 32, 33. Why, why did he want him to be his first choice going forward? I mean, I think he probably just trusts him. He trusts, trusts Antonio. He rates him. I think he, he has the qualities that he likes in a striker. But, but the main point, that he used to be a winger. Um, and, yeah, it's just I think he's worried about spending big on a striker. He's He probably sees it as a gamble. But we need, like, Antonio, how long is he going to do it? So we get this this backup to Antonio that ends up being, like, what, an eight-goal-a-season striker. That's just He's just a backup guy. When Antonio gets injured... Or if he, you know, retires, leaves, you know, he's, you know, he's too old to play. Then we're left with this guy, who's not good enough to f- even fill Antonio's shoes. Like we need someone to do better than Antonio. We need a fifteen. Who goal do you player. want? Who do you want, Lawless? <sighs> it's 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 tough to see who's available. Obviously, I think we've we've been going in for Broger, but question marks are on him if he's ready to to be that guy and to to step up. Um, do you think you'd tell him, Matisse, bro? Um, I think it all depends on the Lukaku situation. I think if Lukaku goes back to Inter Milan or goes um, elsewhere, I think at the moment his lawyers, he sacked his agent and his lawyer is meeting with Inter Milan um, representatives tomorrow, apparently. If, if rumours are true and that he wants to go back, um, but it's a little bit conflicting because sometimes he says that he wants to stay and prove his point or whatever. So I have no idea what's going on. If he was to, to leave on loan, then I think Broya could end up staying because then I think we then should go for more direct goal scoring wingers and keep Broya and Havertz in the centre to compete. 
um, sacrifice maybe getting goals centrally and look for goals out wide. And obviously from midfield, Conor Gallagher can score goals from midfield as well. You've got Mason Mount. But if Lukaku stays, then I think they would be open to potentially selling Borussia with maybe a buyback because I don't no. see I don't see the room. Yeah, you uh, you gonna have to handle that buyback, bro. I hate these because <laughs> somebody buybacks. will somebody will. Do you know what? If you the thing is with you, yeah, is if you guys don't allow us to put a buyback on this, some other club will like Southampton. Where was the buyback? Over there but where was the buyback for Lukaku? Where was the buyback for De Bruyne? Where was the buyback for Salah? Yeah, this is and new time. Give us this, is, this is new, no. new, new day, new dawn. If you if you don't take the buyback, <laughs> then we'll sell it to someone who will. Aren't Especially aren't, the way you guys are moving those, Declan Rice as well. I don't aren't those examples? Yeah? Aren't those examples why? Aren't those examples why? Aren't exactly. those examples of why Chelsea are putting a buyback clause? No, nah, it's not fair. Kevin Lebron no, 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 went for fifty something million. Lukaku yeah. went for Lukaku's since gone on for like seventy five million and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> it's considering, who really, considering, who considering really you want to slap, yeah. considering you want to slap a one hundred and fifty million valuation on Declan Rice, yeah, we'll slap a buyback on him as well. How about that one? We'll slap he doesn't a want to go back. back. That's the problem. He's not going back. <laughs> He's not going back to West Ham on Tuesday. You slap a buyback. You slap a buyback. I don't know, because an American guy might really slap a buyback on Declan Rice. You get your own buyback. Right. All I'm saying is, <laughs> no, one, no, one, no one's doing buybacks now because if I'm paying, like I would do a buyback for Broja if you're giving him for, to us for like 10, 15 million or something. We ain't slapping down like 40 to 50 on a guy that you could just go, oh, he's good now. Yeah, we'll take him back. Like, 20, 20, nah. 50, 20, I would say 25 million say we'll buy back of about 40, 50, 50. 50 oh, 50. Oh, like he's saying five million. Yeah. You don't ask for twenty five million for Broza. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just hypothetically. If we used to slap a buyback on it, we'd bring the fee down. I'd say it has and to come and double your money. That's what I would say. We, we, we sold Livermento to Southampton. Obviously, he hadn't played Premier League football yet, but he, he's got a buyback as well that can be. I'm sorry, you got to be. You, if I, if I'm Chelsea, if I'm Chelsea, I'm, I'm fishing for around thirty to thirty five million for Broza minimum, yeah, minimum. But, but yeah, we have a buyback. We have a buyback. With a buyback. I don't think they will. Yeah. I don't think You're they will right, do a buyback. Man. I don't think they You're will right, do a man. buyback. Bro, Broya's only scored six goals in the Premier League this season. He That's what I mean. Like, Broya, right. I don't think he's prolific. Like, he's a great player. He looks good. He's got attributes I like. But I don't look at him and go, wow, that's 25. That's 25 goals a season striker. I don't think it is. I don't know. I, listen, I, can't be, I might be wrong and he might go on to I do it. But I like him. getting more hype from Toby than Tammy Abraham ever got. Oh, man. He only scored six. Hey, what's that very interesting, more. isn't it, Toby? I thought he scored more. Uh, I, 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 like, I, like, I like Tommy Abraham, Abraham yeah. man. Yeah, I like Tommy Abraham. Abraham. But, Abraham yeah, he's sick. Hybrid. I like him. Yeah, but but, you could, Matisse, Matisse, I think Tommy Abraham could have commanded... Could have commanded like, he's, got a buyback. He commanded. he's got a buyback. And how much did that cost? Um, 35, I think, 35 I million. I think Tommy Abraham's buyback is 80 million euros. So maybe sixty, seven, eight. No, 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 I'm saying, wow. I'm saying his fee to Roma was around thirty-five million pounds, right? It's about thirty-four million, wasn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think it was something like that. Um, mm. But again, if you if you slap a buyback on, then you obviously get less because yeah, of course. So, that's yeah, these, but that's but what I, I'm saying I, these buybacks are yeah, just... thirty-four million. Yeah, I think lawless. Like realistically, like there's a few options. I think that have been proven to score goals. Like you might not want some of these names, but. I look at Ivan Tony. He might not want to leave, but I think he probably would prefer to go to West Ham than I Brentford. Think be, I, think look, I think that'd be a decent yeah. signing. I, I look I at players like attitude. That's what I question. Like the way he was coming out with this fuck Brentford and all of this stuff. Yeah. And yeah, but I don't know how like, much that he was. He had a couple of drinks. It's yeah, like, really? I just. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Club like he, that, I like. would. I think. I think he'd be good for West Ham. Like I wouldn't even think that you should be. Like too annoyed. I know, mind you, he's been injured most of this season. But Bamford was looking like decent, proper decent before yeah. his injury. That's the thing he would have been an okay. Um, obviously, uh, Watkins, what's his name? We're looking at Oli Watkins. Watkins. Yeah, good player. To be fair, the other ones I was thinking were, were no, nah, yeah, that's that's fair play. It was because obviously Broa, the and then he, yeah, the amount these then, guys were up though. Sorry, Dan. No, no, you're cool, man. You're cool. I was just going to say, lastly, the two, obviously, Broa was one. The other one that people would laugh at when I mentioned it, I wouldn't want him at Arsenal, but I mentioned him just banging in goals left, right and centre, is Mitrovic, man. He just, this guy's. I know he's been in the Premier League and hasn't really smashed it, smashed it, smashed it, but that'd be wow, I'm, I'm looking at yeah. him thinking that would be a good signing for West Ham, Mitrovic. I don't know, man. I think he's one of these players. He's too good for the championship, not good enough for the Prem. 
He just that's he just not true that because vibe. he played the, his his first full his 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 campaign his first campaign for Fulham Premier League when he was playing week and week out he hit double figures in the league. When how long ago was that? That was 2018, 2019. Yeah, I mean a long time, a long time as yeah, a long time ago. And then, and then when he when he played when when Scott Parker was there, one he had injury problems and two the football they played they played a high transition based um, brand of football and he just couldn't keep up with the pace. So he would slow down the move. So it, it didn't make sense for them to play yeah, with his yeah. type of striker. But, but for what but we you need pace, you think you're thinking like all the people that no, you're bro. Like, okay, we're going to no, pump it along. Bro, bro. I'm not saying you, down. no, bro. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you don't need pace. Look at you, when you look at what Antonio does, of course, an element of pace is required, but what most importantly, you need goals. Beyond the pace, you need goals and you need someone who can actually feed others into play. And Mitrovic can do those things. He can. He may not be an elite striker. I think he'd be he all right. Like, and he's played in the Premier League. He's at Newcastle and Fulham. He wasn't like an absolute waste Fulham man either. Him. I don't know. No, you might be that. right. But like, I look at it like, honestly, Lourdes, like with Mitrovic, if you got him and, and, you know, it might not work. All players are risks, of course. But yeah. you might say there's no pace. But then why not just go like Tony and Emmanuel Dennis are two players that I would look at and think, yeah, they'd be better than what West Ham are currently got. Yeah, like Dennis West Ham on like the, the look of um faster. How much will Tony cost? Because some of the figures I see for Tony is nuts to me. It's like I'm seeing like 45 million. That's oh, crazy no, money. Surely for not, man. 40, yeah, 45 I mean, million. That is insane. Money. The penalties this season quite a yeah. bit as well. So yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm not too sure. I wouldn't pay big money. I'm hearing uh, Dennis for like 20 mil or something, and, and I think that would be decent value. I think he could do quite a bit. I think he got, he offers quite a lot, and he's he's got the pace there, and he's good on the ball. Um, and he's been in a shit Watford side. Like to to have the output that he's had, which um, I think it was something like 12 goals, six assists, or something around that line. To do that in that Watford side is impressive. And he can play on the wing as well, I believe, and up front. Um, so I like him. Um, yeah, so it depends. Like when you when we talk about oh, what player, what, what player do you want? We've just signed like Rob Newman from Man City last year. I want that guy to do his job and scout players I, I've never even heard of. I wouldn't recognize them. I've walked past them in the street, and they can come in and and hit the ground running and be good in their position. That's what I want to see. So rather than just like, okay, so this name, this name, obviously we're going to scout who we're aware of. His job is to go and scout players. So and you, find you don't gems. want maybe Premier League proven that comes at I, price. You would rather do, go for the gems. Yeah. Mix it, mix it up. Like I think, yeah, if there's a Premier League proven, I like our links with uh, Cornette from Burnley. I think he's a decent player. I think he would fit into our team. Well, like where there's yeah, where there's a good McNeil, McNeil as well, maybe because you said your left hand side's been a bit of a problem. Yeah, we definitely need a left back. Yeah, I think he's sure. overrated that McNeil, you know. I don't see any output from him at all. Like he's a, he's just, a good player. I like him. I like McNeil. We just need I player. think we just need pace in and around our team and actually the left back who can defend and go forward. But yeah, I want a mixture. Like if there's a good choice going if there's a good option there that's prem proven and the price is right, go for it. But don't just rely on that. The players that we're just aware of, he's he should be scouting all the different leagues, looking at players, seeing who fits our system, who has the right attributes, who could come in and fit what we're looking for. He's had enough time to watch West Ham over the season now. He can talk to to Moyes, um, and then we just need to get the money, and then we can go again. But yeah, first of all, sign up Ariola. I think he's the future. Um, get this Agued again. I do, I wasn't aware of him, but if Moyes and Newman they see him, they see he's got the right attributes. He looks like he can. He looks like he's actually a bit. He's a bit faster than you know. I mean, someone like Agbona, someone like Dawson. He's not obviously you know winger fast, but he's fast for a centre back and um, can pick out a tackle. So yeah, man, we just need to improve badly. This is going to be like a sweaty summer, like you know, on the transfer run at field. So. And I'm because I'm watching all these other teams and what they're doing, and that that's why we just got to get the job done early. But get the striker in. <laughs> it's nervous, man. It's make or break, make or break for West Ham this summer. It's a very big summer for you lot, and um, it's also a very big summer for Arsenal. And they've started <laughs> so strongly thanks to Chelsea, Stamford Bridge. You know what I'm saying? Etienne Ketia, where he was born, came from Cobham, reignited by Chelsea. 
And now five year, 100k a week, I think, contract to Arsenal after that last bit of form at the end of the season. Is he your Origi? Is he your captain clutch? Are you happy with this news, Potts? Because to be fair, if you bring in a starter now, he's a decent deputy. He's shown that he can, can get some goals. Yes, it's been capitalising off a lot of errors, I think, my pers- personal opinion, but he's still been there to, to, to put the ball in the back of the net. It's not the worst deputy to have if you actually go and get a starter and maybe a, uh, maybe two starters out wide and then up front on the left as well. Yeah, I, I can't even lie and say that he's had a bad few games because he's done what he's been paid for and that's put the ball in the back of the net. However, having said that, I don't think he's a player that takes you to the next level. If he's going to come in as a third-choice striker, I think we're fine with that, keep him. I just think it's a madness that he's kind of warranted 100k a week. I just find that a bit bizarre. But if Arsenal can afford that, then so be it. You know, I'm, I'm not... I'm not a finance guy, I don't know how much we've got, but what I will say is if we don't start to spend big and have this war chest we're talking about, then um, it sounds silly if we just get a couple of players and Eddie and Ketty has been put on that much money. Um, some of the players that we've been linked with are quite promising, to be honest, and I quite like the look of or the sound of. Um, however, I obviously believe it when I see it. I just hope it happens quick, Matisse, because we were three games last season um, and everyone blamed COVID. Actually, it was because we didn't prepare ourselves. That was why it was. We didn't prepare mm. ourselves in time. Um, we still didn't have Ramsdale at the time. We still didn't have Tommy Yasu at the time. We still didn't have Erdegaard. Um, So we played a, a team of kids, basically, in the first game. And then against City and Chelsea, we got beaten up and bullied because we had a second stringer team out, which was basically how we left ourselves in the last few games, <laughs> a, a second string of split teams. So we were never going to really go for that Champions League when you look at it in that respect I think if anybody would have said oh you know these five players that you're going to have are going to be and you name them I think most people would have gone Christ Arsenal ain't getting top four then and we didn't so that was my biggest kind of bugbear really was that we left ourselves so thin Uh, we need to see a huge summer now Um, Eddie to answer your question it doesn't wind me up or frustrate me it just makes me question trust the process what is the process because I know it's a youth project but this is a guy who in my opinion um, has proven not to be the the answer for the last three seasons and we've now put him on a big contract for five years Um, what's you know he wanted to leave Arsenal because he wanted first team football does that mean he's going to be getting a lot of first team football now that's my question mark I don't know Um, I'll be really frustrated if we buy one striker now instead of two really frustrated uh, because I don't think it's enough. And, you know, we're looking at Gabriel Jesus and Tielemans as our two star names, from what I'm hearing. Um, and I'm not so sure that Gay- Jesus is that prolific striker we need. Um, I don't know how many goals he scored. I think it's six. Um, or Laka scored four. So it's not a massive upgrade on that. Um, now, it is in terms of the player, but in terms of the output, it's not. So I, I don't know that he's going to be enough. I think we'd probably need to be looking at a Tammy Abraham or Ozerman or somebody like that on top of it. Looks like Darwin Nunes, the one I want, is going to go to Manchester United, which is a great signing for them. No, so it's going, going to be interesting. He's not going United. Oh, where's he going then? I think Madrid are trying to get him. Oh, OK, there we go. So it looks like he's not coming to us. So, um, And I think that's frustrating because I think that's the kind of player I would have wanted to take us to that next level. He's that all-round number nine that I feel we need. He's that target man. And that's why I think Tammy Abraham would be a good side, a, a good signing, because I think that he would be a player that would come in and, and upgrade and, and take us forward. But um, we're going to need probably six or seven players, and I question whether we're going to get six or seven players, mate. I really do. Um, I look at the the positions that we have at the moment, and we probably have a squad of about fourteen players, and mm-hmm. we need a squad of twenty to twenty five. <laughs> that's a lot of surgery that's needed in our midfield and, and our strike force because at the moment it's very weak. Um I worry about our injuries. Tommy Asu, Party and Tierney have struggled to keep fit this season. Um and I feel like, you know, everyone laughs when we say this, but Saka should not have been playing every minute of every single game this season at nineteen. But he did because we had one game a week and he was our star gem. So we had to be playing him. And uh, I worry about players of that age that are playing that much football when we're going to be next season playing four uh, four competitions or, 
you know, twice a week, two games a week. How much is he going to play? I worry that we're going to we're going to just completely knacker this kid. So it's going to be interesting to see how many players we do bring in Matisse and where we go from here. But I do feel that the the fullbacks are an issue because Tommy Asu and Tierney are injury prone. I feel that we need something in the middle when Party gets injured, and I feel like a Basuma type figure in there is needed. And then, of course, up top, we've pretty much got no strikers at the moment. So it's going to be a, a busy summer, I, I suspect. Um, but what I don't want to see is the likes of Marquinhos coming in as one of our players that is going to be seen as a, a good player. That, that for me, is like a Martinelli. You know, he's one for the future. I, don't, I think we've got enough of these young kids now. Yeah, we need to be yeah. seeing what experience we've got moving forward. Like it, it worries me. This is a youth project, <laughs> and uh, but it's, but it's a youth project at... that just keeps going on and on and on because you've already yeah. got young, you've already got young players. Now what you probably need is some experience. You need to be adding mm. model professionals, top quality players that can then actually help develop those young players and surround them with with leaders. And you seem like obviously with the Marquinhos one, for example, you're going to add more young players to that, just more mm. youth to the already and, most youthful team in the league. And I'm realistic to know that we're not going to go and buy um, an, an experienced head that's won everything. You know, I, I, don't get me wrong. They're going to stay at the Madrids, the Bayern Munichs, the Man Cities, etc. But when you're looking at players that have won stuff, like Gabriel Jesus, like um, the, the um, players we've been linked with of late, I think, do you know what? At least that they bring a little bit of mentality and proven experience in the Premier League. Even Tielemans, I know he's 25, I think now. Hasn't like, you know, he's won an FA Cup, etc. But he's got experience. He's a Belgian international. He's got Premier League proven now. He looks like a top all-round baller. That kind of player is fine. I'd rather have him than an up-and-coming Lokonga again. Do you know what I mean? So it's about where we go with this next step at Arsenal. And I keep trying to be told that this process is going to work. Well, Prove it to me this summer that it's going to work because nothing's working at the moment. And when I'm seeing the names of Marquinhos and Aaron Hickey and Molina and some of the other players, that don't fill me with excitement. So we have to see what happens. I'd, I'd be surprised as well if um, Lenketia was going to be third choice. I really don't think, I don't think you give someone 120 grand a week in a five year deal who wanted out and going, yeah, and then he's going to be the third choice. Now we're going to sign two strikers. You'll probably sign another striker that, 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 Eddie will compete with but you know on, on Jesus I don't know whether he is going to be that guy for for Arsenal like if he scored six to eight goals this season for Man City who create a lot more chances who are a lot more of a team who's going to have the ball a lot more a lot more attacking than the, the team like Man City and he's scoring putting out them numbers with Arsenal you know, uh, it's it's going to be like the same or less, really. Uh, that, that the same you could hope for. I, I can't agree. see him being a fifteen, a fifteen goal guy for Arsenal, fifteen to twenty. Nowhere near going to replace what Abamyang was doing last season and all of that stuff. So, like, you, you really need someone who's, you know, top top quality. So that wouldn't feel with like excitement. I think nah, you should be excited about Gabriel Jesus. I think that's 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 a. If you if Arsenal sign him, that's a quality signing for Arsenal, in my opinion. I think I think what he gives you all round, like he's he's a really good player that a lot of people sleep on. But I think the one point which Lawless made, which is valid, is that his goal scoring, it's not the that Jesus can't finish. Like Gabriel Jesus can finish, and we've seen him finish well in the league. It's his conversion. And yet people look at the stats. If you look at his conversion rate, is actually quite it's weird, his conversion rate is quite good, but you just watch it. You watch him for Man City, he misses quite a lot of chances. And if you look at his expected goals, I know a lot of people don't like expected goals. Hmm. He's someone who he's someone who who is more of an underperformer on his expected goals than over, which means that he's missing he's missing a lot of chances that he should be burying. And that is that's that is my only concern with Jesus and has always been my concern with Jesus is he, he doesn't have that ruthlessness to be that guy to be like the main goal scorer for a team. Because mm. you see, even when, even when he's having good seasons at man, at man city, he still has the tendency to, to miss chances. And I think Arsenal should sign Jesus hundred percent. If he's available, you should sign him. I think he, he definitely lifts your attack by by another level but in addition to Gabriel Jesus you lot need to be looking at another attacker whether that's out wide or whether that's up front you need to be looking at another attacker Arsenal need one goal scorer at least who you can say no matter what is happening you are guaranteeing us 15 to 15 plus Premier League goals 
And I don't think Arsenal can say that right now. Yeah, but that's the thing, Tobes. What they need and what they'll do is another thing. And like I said, if they're giving Eddie and Ketia this big contract, they're not going to be like, right, we're going to sign now Jesus and this 15. They have to. They have to. Yeah, they but... have to. They have to. And, and who's to say? And the thing is, who's to say that? Like, who's to say Gabriel Jesus doesn't make that jump? Because he scored. I'm pretty sure he That's scored. I'm, saying, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he scored like close to 15 in the league for, for Man City before. Um, Gabriel Jesus. Again, that's Man City. That's Man yeah, City. I get that. But, but what I'm saying is, Gabriel Jesus. In the world. I get that. But what I'm saying is, Gabriel Jesus is that good a player. Yeah. And he can finish. So he can easily, he, he can easily make that jump. He can. I wouldn't be shocked if he, Gabriel Jesus played for Arsenal next season, playing, starting the majority of matches and hit cl close to 15, if not on 15 Premier League goals. But my point is, Arsenal need, an Arsenal need, like, guaranteed, guaranteed reliability in, in the goal scoring department. Because look at what happened in their season, relying on Bukayo Saka, um, Emma Smith Rowe's goals dried up in the second half of the campaign. Saka's goals dried up in the last in the last couple of weeks of the season. I think he only scored. I think the last couple of weeks of the season he scored like two goals, and both of them came from the spot. So like, Arsenal need shooters. Gabriel but, Jesus, a really good player, not enough. There needs to be it needs to be Gabriel Jesus plus one more. But how, yeah. how do you how much do you think they're getting Jesus for? Like how much realistically? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think they're getting him cheap and then they can just splash big on the next. I don't think yeah. they're getting him cheap. I'm saying they need to splash. I'm saying they yeah, need but that, to but as Dan just said, if they splash big on two strikers, two star strikers, and then they've got a like he like like Dan said, get a, a, a really quality uh, midfielder. Get a really quality left back. Get a real quality right. Like, like yeah, they're going to probably spend big. But even say, even if they have 150 million, that only goes for so far if they're spending nearly 100 of it on. Well, they're talking. They're talking yeah. all this about Jesus being between 35 and 40, and then Ozerman being nearly up to 70. So there you go. That's your. That's 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 pretty much most of your budget done already. So I yeah. get what you're saying. I, I mean, they're talking about you know, it being close to. Yeah, yeah, they're talking about it being sense. closer to 200 million. That's what they're saying that we're going to be spending. I don't know how true that is, but we're going to need to because you can't you can't have a squad of 19 players, which is what we've got. We've got 19 players and and buy two two strikers. You can't do yeah, that. Yeah, and that's got... I don't know who, who who they're selling at this point because they let a load of players go in January. Who is left to sell that is people would want to buy? Like who do Arsenal have that they see surplus to requirements that other so, teams would go, "Yeah, I want that. So player. the players that are going to be, uh, whether or not you think these are going to be in, of interest to anybody, the players that are going to go is uh, Bernd Leno is going to go. I imagine he'll be of interest to somebody in Italy or, or Germany. Uh, Hector Bellerin. Uh, the other ones are Pablo Marie, uh, Cedric, potentially Tavaj, because that probably might be a loan from what I'm hearing. Uh, and then obviously there's rumours over uh, Pepe. And then Granite Chaka, there's rumours again over. So wow. none of those you go, wow. But they'll no. probably get, some of those will get you like between 15 and 20 million tops, I imagine. Something like that. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what wages those players are on because obviously that's usually a factor in trying to, which yeah. Arsenal have had a problem in the past of trying to shift players on high wages. Bellerin, but yeah. Bellerin and Chaka are on 100k. The others are on below that, obviously. Pe Pepe um, is your one cash cow, I think. There, and I don't even know how much Pepe commands, to be honest. But 25 million, make... something like that. Can't yeah. can't he's on big wages. I'm pretty sure he's on big wages. Like, yeah, he's on 170 like... grand a week. Arsenal are gonna, yes. Arsenal are gonna, ha Arsenal are gonna have to definitely pay some players off for sure. They're gonna have yeah. to supplement some wages, 100. But uh, like Dan said, this is the this is the situation that the club have put themselves in. So yep. you didn't sign anyone in January, yeah? Yep. You sold off all of these players. There are more players that are going to be sold in the summer. This is your this is your situation. This is what you've made the fans believe that you've been building towards. We didn't sign a player in January because we believe that we we don't want it to ruin the wider project. So, like Dan said, show the fans the wider project. Spend, spend the money. Yeah, you've they're not really a good, every, everybody seems to have these two hundred million pound budgets, right? It's, it's the fee that goes out every every single time. Hmm. Then we check at the end. Does anybody actually go at the end of the window to check if they actually spent their 200 million? You know, not, not many people do, and it's very rare that, rare that they actually get it done. For a team that are entering Europe, talking about getting rid of players, you need more players. You don't have enough yep. players. As soon as as soon as Arsenal had party out injured, Tommy Asu injured, the whole world fell apart. 
Everybody now suddenly, we don't have a big enough squad. We we don't have anybody that can come in for these guys. We can't rotate. You you got more games next season, and this is why yeah. I said a couple of weeks ago, if you didn't make top four and you didn't get that extra cash injection, because it's, it remains to be seen if you're actually going to spend this 200 million or they're just waffling. Whereas yeah, didn't you have a Europa League budget and a Champions League budget? That's what I thought they were saying. Oh. Yeah, that, that's the rumour. You know, Messi says about, you know, has anyone actually checked? This is the last time, this is the first time that we've ever said we're going to spend 150 million and did. This is the first time it's ever happened. I remember me and Turkish sitting in the AFTV studio like with each other like, wow, I didn't expect this. This is the first time they've said they're going to spend 150 and they have. They've said now it's going to be closer to 200 million this summer and that's why they've got rid of the wage bill and they've got rid of players in January so that we can see it. So go and spend it then. Go and prove that Arsenal you're going to spend the original war chest club. Every, every, every season summer. you hear about war chest, Arsenal getting a war chest and it never materialised. And I think a lot of it Matisse, to your point about is anyone? I think a lot of it comes from tabloids and them, you know, trying to excite fans, hype fans up to actually click or sell papers or saying they see big splash like Arsenal two hundred million pound war chest and they're going to be like spending their money. Oh, let me read about this war chest. Oh, and getting all excited. That's usually, I think, what happens when they're hyping up these these transfer budgets. Mm, no, hundred percent. It's going to be interesting because I think. Arsenal in a in a weird position, unlike Tottenham, where you can clearly see, I think, what direction they're probably going to go in. Uh, at least they have to go in with Conte, otherwise he'll 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 kick up a fuss. West Ham, I think, realistically, what you'd probably expect for West Ham is to slightly kind of either hang around this kind of position they finished in, or maybe a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending on the market. But I don't think West Ham are going to move too much from where they currently are, unless unless they really pull out some big money um and on on, on this on this squad because your squad is also too thin isn't it dan for europe and you've got conference league next season i mean probably you could as you said maybe last week rotate a lot more in the conference league and 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 get by that way but you still need more players as well so yeah we need players to rotate <laughs> yeah <laughs> players exactly to- you can't rotate if you just got the, the the same squad of players for sure so yeah i think mm-hmm. we're, we're similar situation the difference that we're in advantage that we have over Arsenal and I'm hearing Dan talk about you know we've got Tommy Asu who we need someone a backup for when he gets injured we need a player for when Partey gets injured we need a player for when Tini gets injured like you can you really afford to have players that you just know are going to get injured and then you have to have someone as equal or close to the quality of that player like thankfully we're not in that predicament where there's a player that I'll go and it used to be Antonio but, you know, he, he stayed fit this season. But, the, you know, the, we haven't got any players where I look at and go, yep, he's definitely getting injured next season. He's definitely getting injured next season. To have players like that, that you know, that are these got them. first choice players. <laughs> you've got, yeah, it's just... You've got a load of them. I, I can tell you right now, next season, Kante's going to pick up an injury. Um, Kova's going to pick up an injury. Um, Pulisic's going to pick up an injury. Ziyech is going to pick up an injury. Um, those, those, those four... Hundred percent, they're gonna pick. I up feel like you can, like with Chelsea. Sure, well, like, sure, well, will he was injured at yeah. Leicester and now at Chelsea? <laughs> yeah, but he injured at Leicester a lot. Uh, not a lot, but he used to always get knocks and stuff, didn't he? Mm. I think yeah. apart from Chilwell, you can probably deal with those players getting injured a little bit more than with Arsenal. Those three players getting injured is, is as we've seen, is devastating for them. And to for have to something like Dan to be like just accept it like and you know that's just the way it is but it, you know it's just like yep you know we know these players are going to get injured next season so we need some backups for them it's like geez if you've got that like you've got to really look at that and go these players like yeah they're good players when they're fit but if they're hardly ever fit why are we keeping yeah. them yeah and I think can't... a lot of people are are like that now with Kieran Tierney because he's my favorite player he's been wicked and he is sick when he's fit but you can't have three seasons now. Where you've been at Arsenal, where you're pretty much always out. <laughs> so you have to look at that seriously now. Tommy Asu and Party a bit differently because obviously they've not been there as long. Tommy Asu's had one season and when he has been fit, he's been wicked. Party, I mean, Party's he was looking there, so, bro. so good. But 29 mm. years old now, he was never injured at Atletico Madrid. I looked at his record at Atletico Madrid, he was never injured. Every single game, beast. Now comes here injured so sometimes different league doesn't help sometimes training I think is is an issue as well some of the training pitches have always been question mark at Arsenal because we've had a lot of players that have come and been injured long term um but I think as well Lawless to answer your question if we want to compete with Liverpool and City which is what I want to do one day 
then we're going to need to have two players in each position. So I think, you know, we have to go down that route. You do, but the point is, is if you've got two players in each position and one player is guaranteed to miss at least half or more of the season, have you really got two players in each position? Well, yeah, that's like, a good point. That, that's the thing. It's like, to me, you have to obviously make a decision on T&E. Tommy Asu gets a bit more time. Part A, you need to start looking at him because he's had, what, two seasons now, big signing. And some like when you've got other people in the midfield that are nowhere near as important as him and have everything crumble when he's not there, you're better off cashing in on him sooner than later because each mm. season he keeps getting these injuries, his value just drops drastically mm. because people are looking... Obviously, his age is going up. And other teams are looking at him going, geez, this guy could never stay fit in, in over mm. like, when he gets to three years. Geez, every year. So I think Arsenal need to consider that and start thinking maybe we could invest that in some, you know, centre back, uh, mid, some midfielders that are going to get, you know, stay fit. Mm, 100%. Well, listen, guys, we're going to we're gonna wrap this one up. Um, it's been a great show. It's definitely, I think, Tottenham probably the happier out of, out of the four of us. Maybe myself as well, just because this is over. We're now debt free. No one can come to me and say, oh, Chelsea aren't doing things in the right way. Oil hungry, sugar daddy club. That's all over now. We're now being ran correctly up to your high, high moral standards. So I hope everybody <laughs> is happy. Okay. I hope everybody is happy now. And we're, we can come and sit around the, the, the high moral grand table that Liverpool fans like to sit at as well. We can sit alongside them. So we've all got Americans now. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Lawless, let them know where to find you, bro. Pleasure as always. Yeah, absolute pleasure to be on the show as always at the Lawless on Twitter. That's where I'm, um, you know, posting a lot. You can engage with me. I'm good at replying to people, West Ham fan TV, um, everything else. So, but yeah, good, good to be here. Let's hope by the time I'm next on the show, West Ham have made a couple of signings. We're making moves. I, I, I hope so. <laughs> Toby, let them know where to find you, bro. Pleasure. Uh, <clears throat> tapping Tobes on all socials YouTube, Instagram, Twitter yeah, follow me, subscribe to me there you go, and uh, Pots bro, let them know about the new channel I believe a first upload today is it? yeah man, I did do like a little intro video today actually, um, but I'm going away for a week, but there won't be content till the week after but that's when the channel properly starts at Football's 12th Man on all socials YouTube, Twitter, Instagram and if you want to follow my personals then it's at Dan Arsenal 87 pleasure as always Matisse there you go. So, guys, make sure you go and subscribe to all the channels. Links are in the description, as always. And I'll be back um, for, for, obviously, more uploads here and on Twitch as well. We'll be covering some of the international matches. I've seen some little couple tasty fixtures that, that I'm, I'm looking forward to keeping an eye on. We could do a bit of scouting there, look at some fixtures. Um, but, yeah, covering the news daily and, and make sure we keep up to date with all the transfer business. Now that the, the ownership is here, I'm expecting moves this week on in terms of incomings and, and outgoings, hopefully. So, we'll keep up to date with it here in a bit, people. Peace.